Hello and welcome to the Tin Dog Podcast. Before I start discussing Planet of the Ood, I've got something I think you should hear. It's a sample taken from considerably later in the season, where the Doctor discusses the complex story arc of one of his former companions. Goodbye, Rose. (coughs) Hello, Rose. No, of course it's not. It's actually a sample taken from Big Finish's ridiculously good audio version of The Adventures of Luther Arkwright. That's by Brian Talbot, a fantastic graphic novel, and well worth tracking down, especially if you like your time travellers played by Tennant, but with a slightly more Jerry Cornelius feel. I'd also like to thank Daniel Jensen from Bluebell USA for donating to help keep the Tin Dog podcast running. Thanks, Daniel. And finally... On with this week's episode. As usual, I'm going to take it as read that you've already seen the episode, and that way there won't be any need for any spoiler alerts. And so we return to the Ood. They weren't everybody's favourite villain, and of course the word villain really isn't applicable to the Ood at all. They're just aliens. And they do come across a little bit like Star Trek's holodeck. Just don't use them, they'll always go wrong, something will always happen and people will die. Again, as usual, that's a bit of an oversimplification of things when you look at the slightly complex storyline. Well, I say complex. What I actually mean is fairly straightforward. We always knew there'd be something completely odd about the Ood, forgive the almost pun. No race could truly have evolved if all it wanted to do was serve and had very little of its own motivation. Something else had to be at play, and in keeping with the traditions of most science fiction, the guilty party had to be the human race. In keeping with Russell T's view of a middle management Doctor Who villain, similar in many respects to the sort of villains you used to see in the John Pertwee period, or even in the Eccleston story, The Long Game, we have a villain who isn't truly evil, just more corrupted with spurious moral values. And at its core, that's what this story's about. It's about moral values. The sort of thing that classic Doctor Who used to do very, very well. The Green Death, with stories about the environment, and big business just stomping all over people as a prime example. And a story I would definitely recommend to any people from New Who. The effects may come across as a little bit ropey, but don't hold that against it. The story's available on DVD, so it should be quite easy to track down. We're really beginning to see the way that Donna balances the Doctor. She provides him with, admittedly a human, a set of morals, but one that the Doctor can quickly refute. We don't have slaves. Who makes your clothes? It's a fantastic line, and one that will stay with a lot of people for a very long time. I wonder if it's a coincidence that BBC Three is also running a short documentary series on who exactly makes your clothes and the conditions of Far Eastern sweatshops, or is it just a pleasant thing to watch? Similarly, the solution of killing all of the Ood off doesn't just remind everyone of concentration camps, but even as the episode says, it's just like us killing off the cattle with the foot and mouth. Like I said, of course, it isn't a perfect story. If I was to be picky, and let's face it, we're Doctor Who fans, we're going to be a little bit picky. Creatures that would evolve to have their brains in their hands seems at best unlikely. Although the one thing that many other Doctor Who fans seem to have had issue with is that the human race has made it out into several galaxies in just 40,000 years. Given the sort of engines that science fiction vehicles have, I really don't have much of an issue with us making it that far out. The end of the story is nicely executed, but it does remind me of an old Roald Dahl Tales of the Unexpected, the Queen Jelly, where an unsuspecting gentleman is given royal jelly from a bee and eventually starts behaving very similar to one. I seem to remember Timothy West played the part on TV. Of course, the end of an episode brings me to a very, very popular conversation topic, which is foreshadowing things which will appear later on. Now, the big one was the announcement by the Ood that the Doctor's song may end soon. Now, for a lot of people, that means he's going to regenerate. And we know that David Tennant can't play the part forever, which led me to think that perhaps he won't make it out of this series in one piece. 
But rest assured, he's definitely recording the Christmas special right now. So at least we know he makes it all the way through to at least Christmas. Again, with the foreshadowing, we get another mentioning of the disappearance of the bees. Apparently it was Albert Einstein who first put forward the idea that if the bees disappear, there will be no pollination, and eventually mankind will die out within four years. An ideal way of getting rid of the human race. So that's definitely part of a sto larger story arc. Another potential story arc, which I, for one, hadn't noticed and was pointed out by James Lane in an email this week, was that Venus seems to have been mentioned twice. First, the planet... Donna's granddad was looking at it, and second, the goddess Venus. Perhaps it's a coincidence, perhaps not, we will find out very shortly. Of course, next week, we get to find out all about the Atmos Company. But before I play the coming soon section of the show, I just wanted to say that this week marks the end of Paul and Seb's time with the WhoCast. They've worked tremendously hard over the years, providing us with the best Doctor Who podcast available. If you're not familiar with it, I suggest you track down the back catalogue. However, the WhoCast itself is not coming to an end. Here's Tony to explain. And there they go, walking hand in hand off into the sunset. Bless them. Into retirement, to grow marrows and take up knitting. They'll probably knit shawls. Seb will probably call his Liz. But fear not. Introducing the all-new, power-boosted, open-ended WhoCast. With, uh, well, <clears throat> more of the same. But with me, Tony. And me, Trevor. It's changed, my dear, and it seems not a moment has been prepared for. Oh, you had to go there, didn't you? You just had to go there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The new Who cast coming in five days from Doctor Who Online. Just don't make me watch Warriors of the Deep again, please. A few weeks ago I played one of the tracks from the Who Mix website and it was so popular that I've been listening out for something else that you might like. Well, here's a new version of the Doctor Who theme tune, very different from anything you might be expecting. It's kind of a bit thrash medley with a touch of Marilyn Manson. But either way, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So first is the trailer for next week's show, followed by Destructor Tarantula. By Destructor Tarantula. There won't be a Tin Dog podcast next week, because I'm going to review both parts of the two parts on Tar and Story back to back. Be seeing you.
I'm bringing you back to Earth. Ten. It's just like old times. Nine. Well, what are you searching for? Eight. Shantara. Launching in seven. What do I do? Six. Do not engage in battle. Five. The people are going to fight back. Four. This is our chance. Three. I told you not to launch. Two. Glorious warfare. One. Get them out of there. Doctor Who. Saturday at 6.20 on BBC One. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Dot you came.